Welcome everyone to the Barhead and District Forum interviews for the 2021 municipal elections. The Barhead Chamber of Commerce, Barhead Leader, and Barhead Public Library thanks you for your time today. Welcome Division 4 candidate for the County of Barhead, Lori Jesperson. Before we get started, can you introduce yourself and tell us a little about why you're seeking election? Good morning, good afternoon, whatever day this is. Uh, my name is Lori Jesperson. I'm running for County Councilor in Division 4 in the county of Barhead and uh, I'd like to introduce myself. I live with my wife on the far west end of Thunder Lake uh, on Highway 655. I farm there with my daughter and son-in-law and we've lived there for approximately 44 years. Uh, when we first moved here I met a young a man or an elderly man then that still I came to highly admire and he told us this is the land of opportunity and I believe that here in the county of Barhead this is the land of opportunity and uh, over the years we've uh, worked hard and God has blessed us greatly and we've done well we've had many trying years and yet many good years I have a fair amount of experience in agricultural politics uh, for me, being part of a, organizing a local milk producers association many years ago and eventually being on the board of Alberta Milk and also a delegate to Alberta Beef Producers. Along with that, in the last number of years, I've represented Alberta Milk on what's called the Agri-Environmental Partnership of Alberta, which is a, a partnership of most of the major agricultural commodity groups, representatives, and various levels of government, particularly provincial, but also some federal and municipal governments, dealing with agricultural, environmentally related topics. I decided to run for county councillor after being encouraged by several people, uh, several of my neighbours, and I thought, well, if they don't, wouldn't think that I would be uh, fit to do this, then I shouldn't be doing it. So. I guess that's where I'm at and that's why I'm doing this. I also am concerned about economic development in the county because we, we only have two basic things for a tax base and that's acreages and agricultural land. We have some small uh, small amount of gravel sales and also some oil and gas business which is kind of iffy but I feel that we need to continue to work on economic development within our county and that's the only way we're going to improve our tax base. So that's who I am and why I'm doing this. County Council is paid to attend meetings as they should be. What are your thoughts on using Zoom or similar media for meetings other than council meetings to remove the high cost of travel? Well, I have some experience and probably more experience than I would like with Zoom, especially in the last two years. Uh, there is a place for it, definitely, and it can save mileage. There have been times where I've been thankful I did not have to drive to Edmonton or Calgary. But, on the other hand, if the meetings are local, and if the meetings have any great significance at all, uh, Zoom is not the place for that. I, if you have to make major decisions, there is a high value in meeting in person. Um, I've seen where major decisions have been tried to be made over over or through media like Zoom and sometimes I've seen it several times where the Wi-Fi didn't work on the part of one of the individuals one time it was actually even the presenter and it was a failure of a meeting uh, and sometimes it was even my own Wi-Fi that for whatever reason wasn't working and so I was out of the loop as to what was going on. So to me, Zoom does have a place, but to me it's not, a, it, it's not everything. Following up on the 2019 inspection of municipal reserve lands, where more than 400 examples of nearby or adjacent residents on municipal reserves around Thunder Lake were photographed, where do you stand on this strategic lake plan as there has only been one public engagement? Wow, this is a hard one. Um, Thunder Lake is kind of the heart of, of Division 4, in a sense, <laughs> but it's not the only part of Division 4. But I understand it. I, I've understood this for many years because I do own land right on, along the lake and have 
uh, for the duration of our living there. There are more than one side, side to this story. I know that there has been development and some of it has been grandfathered in where they have had development right down to the shore of the lake and then other people have come along and wanted to do this and they're told that yes there's a reserve land that's not your land you can't touch it. I've also been told that if you want to alter the shoreline that's under DFO, De Department of Fisheries and Oceans. Now don't tell me uh, what they have to do with anything in Alberta. There's no oceans in Alberta, at least not in the maps that I've seen. But on the other hand, uh, I've been told that when we wanted to do our own development along our lake, just in establishing a riparian area, uh, that we cannot touch the shoreline. And likewise, uh, we, we went ahead and developed a, a riparian area to protect the shoreline. And the interesting thing is, water is fluid, as we all know. So what happens on your side of the lake affects my side of the lake and vice versa. Now I know I've seen a lot of criticism about our side of the lake, blaming us for some of the ills of the whole lake. Now we have to remember that, first of all, Thunder Lake is a very shallow lake. I've heard reports that some people saying that it's only 12 feet deep, others that it's as low as or as deep as 18 feet, but either way that's a very shallow lake and it has been subject to winter kill and I've seen it many times over the years where you come in spring and we have a lot of fish kill. And now that doesn't address the actual reserve on the other side of the lake where people want to have access to it, but I think it's going to take the, sol the wisdom of Solomon to solve these issues and to uh, we have to have a remembrance that People uh, have to respect, first of all, I guess the laws of the land, which we may or may not like sometimes, but also the, re the rights of our neighbors. And uh, we can't infringe upon our neighbors' rights, whatever they might be, and that is going to take uh, a fair amount of peacekeeping and resolution <laughs> to resolve. Thank you. Infrastructure, maintenance, and the building of new amenities is always an issue for residents. What amenities would you like to see in the community? What amenities in the community? Well, that, that even brings it larger than what I would thought. But, I mean, one of the main reasons I ran was because of the imp need for the improvement of roads. And it, amenities includes roads, bridges, culverts, ditches. One asset that we have in this county is gravel, and I feel that sometimes that hasn't been used extensively enough or even in the right manner. Talking to a lot of people through this whole campaigning, uh, some people feel that they have good roads, but then there are maybe closer access to pavement. I actually live on pavement, but yet, being a farmer, I use several other side roads, gravel roads, uh, and some of them really could use some help. Uh, especially in adverse weather. I know even driving out of the county of Barrett into the county of Lac Seine, and they seem to have better roads. So those kinds of things uh, bother me. Uh, and that's, like I say, why I decided to run for county council. Um, other amenities. I know there has been money set aside to develop a water line out as far as Campsie, but it fell through in like, and that would be comparable to what has been taken out to Manola and also up to near Landia. Uh, but that fell, well it didn't fall through, but basically the, the further government grants from the provincial and federal governments, uh, they they fell apart, they or they ceased to exist, and so that didn't happen. So I guess when there is money enough, that could be brought back to the table and that could be done, because I believe that there is the reserves there somewhere. Uh, to do this. But on the other hand, that would still only supply those areas and there are other people within the county that would not have that same privilege or, or access to it. Several residents have said crime and crime reduction is a concern. What, if anything, can municipalities do to help reduce crime? Wow, what can municipalities do? I think their hands are by and large tied uh, other than having more, encouraging more police presence throughout the county, and some days I, I'm relieved that they aren't. 
But on the other hand, at, at times, I'm, I'm thankful that they're there. You have to remember that the county's a big place, and it's not just Division 4, that's part of it, but even there, at, like where I live, uh, best response time is going to be in, more or less, on a good day, half an hour. And that's with, with, the, with the police and or any other uh, emergency services. But what can they do? What can be done in the municipality? The best thing, I, thing I've seen <laughs> is mean dogs, but I don't like that idea either. I think I, I feel like I've been licked on by half the dogs in the county in the last couple of weeks. Um, but some of them, uh, well, I didn't let them lick on me because they were going to do more than lick on me. I feel that, I guess that's about the best I can say, but we, we're at, we're at here, unfortunately, we're, we're, we have a weak justice system in this country. And until our federal government changes their attitude towards dealing with crime, uh, we're going to have to do our best to live with it. We can do things like we have Barhead Aware and other social media uh, platforms that we can do to encourage each other to keep a watch on, on what's going on in the community. And, and I guess that's the best we as citizens can do. Is there one point you would like to make that hasn't already been discussed? I guess the only other one is uh, I'd like to re-highlight the fact that we need to work on further economic de de development. And I don't want to downplay what's been, what's been done in the past. I think that's been very important. In fact, I, we've, you know, as we we know, we've lost several major businesses over the la last several years. Uh, Champion Feeds, Imperial Lumber, uh, the Alfalfa Plant, uh, several other. There are other businesses in the town. This the AGLC. But on the other hand, like, how did those businesses even get here? I had a conversation just this past year with the son of a former town manager who told me how his dad had gone to great effort to encourage Imperial Lumber to come not just to the town, <clears throat> excuse me, not to the town but to the, actually to the county because he knew it was going to be benefit to the community and we have to continue to do that. Uh, that has to be a continu continued on and I think I've also been told of stories where opportunities have been missed because of whether it was the, the administration, whatever, the opportunities weren't quite right for a business. And they went down the road, and there's down the road, things are booming. You know, we're in between two major booming towns, one being Westlock, the other one being Whitecourt. But we need to keep at this uh, business de development within our community. Um, I would like to also say that, you know, Division 4 is more than just, or it is not, it includes many things, like it includes Thunder Lake, it includes Tagger Lake, it includes the roads to Dolberg Lake, it includes many roads within Division 4, it includes also gravel pits, and it also includes the, the county land, landfill, the dump. But it also includes a lot of people, uh, and you know we've done many things right in this community, and it's awesome. We have a lot of good resources, both um, recreational resources, uh, good facilities, and decent roads. But they 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 can always be improved on. Um, the C division four and the county. It's a place where people like to live and to work and to play. I've, I've been told that. They like it here. But they also want to be respected. And I've even told that, I've had people tell me that they want to retire here. I actually met one couple where they want to, they moved from Victoria, B.C. to Barhead County in Division 4. And to me it was on a poor road even, but they want to retire here. So, yes, I believe that the county of Barhead Division 4 is the land of opportunity, but to me it's also one of the best kept secrets in Alberta. Thank you again for participating in this format. Before letting you go, do you have any closing remarks? Like I said, I'd like to thank the, the Barhead Public Library, the Chamber of Commerce, and the others that have provided this opportunity to present this and addressing especially the residents of Division 4 
Uh, I want to thank you for your your graciousness when I've come to visit people, and I still have many more people to to try to connect to, and uh, I would like to continue to do that. And if I don't make it even before the the election, uh, I would gladly connect with you afterwards if you contact me. But thank you very much for this opportunity.